hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the top five e-commerce mistakes that I see all the time with Wix websites. Before we get into the video, I do wanna mention that we are trying to get as many subscribers as possible. So if you are new around here or you've been around for a while and haven't subscribed yet, I really wanna challenge you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really would help out a lot. But now let's get into the video. For the first mistake that I see most common on websites is not setting up payment correctly. If we go to the dashboard for this website, go down to settings, scroll down to accept payments. I have seen tons of e-commerce websites forget to set this up when they first create the website. If you do not go through the process to connect your credit or debit cards, or even a PayPal, then you can lose out on a lot of money. And this can prevent your users from checking out or if you go through the process of setting it up, but you don't get accepted, then the users may be able to pay, but after 30 days, they will get a refund. So you really want to make sure that when you set this up, you need to do it correctly and take it very seriously. The second mistake that we will cover is SEO on products. Now I'm sure you are aware that you can add SEO on the website, but there's also a way to do it for each product that you have as well. So if we go to the store products, and we click on one of the products, I'm sure you're already kind of familiar with this setup for adding products. However, if we scroll down to promote, here we can edit the SEO settings. Not only can we change the URL slug, but we can change the name of the title in Google, and we can also have a description for the product as well. Once you are done with the SEO, you can also come over to social share and change some of these settings as well. I highly suggest you do this for each one of your products. If this isn't optimized, then it might be harder to sell these items since they're not ranking high in Google. For this next tip, we're actually gonna come over to the editor. If we check out the pages, here we're gonna see they have a page for women clothes, and underneath that, they have a page for each one of their collections. Same for men and accessories. And if we scroll down a little bit more, you're gonna see that the main shop page is actually hidden. And that's because in this template, they have dedicated pages for each one of their collections. So let me teach you real quick how to create your own page. So if we go to add a page, we're just gonna have a blank page and we're not really gonna change the name right now, but we're gonna come up to add. We're gonna go down to store and then we're gonna pull out a grid product gallery. And this is what we're gonna see. However, if we go into settings, under layout, we can stretch this product gallery to be full width of the page. And we can add like 20 pixels of margin. Then if we come down to filter and press show filters, here we can actually add the filter for each one of the collections. And if we go back into the settings, we're gonna see four collections are displaying on the page. So that's women's jackets, men's new arrival, accessories, and men's best sellers. To change that, we're gonna press this little three dot icon and press edit. Here we can check and uncheck the collections that we want visible on the page. So as you can see, this is a great method for creating your own custom shop pages, one for main category, and some for specific categories or collections. This is definitely something that I would recommend doing, especially if your users are trying to find something specific and don't wanna just go to your generic shop all page. The next thing I want to mention is you need to have really high quality images. As you can see from this website, the images look really nice and clean. I can't tell you the number of websites I've seen where the product images are very low quality mockups or they just look really amateur. There are tons of resources online to have high quality mockups. So I highly suggest if you don't have inventory of your products that you choose to go that route. However, if you do have inventory of your products, I would highly suggest you go to Amazon and invest a little bit of money in a studio light box. You can get some from anywhere from 16 to $40 for smaller products. And for larger products, you can get them for around $120. I would definitely say this is the best way to go. However, if you have the money and you do have some inventory, maybe you could hire a professional product photographer, send them a couple samples of your products, and they'll potentially edit the photos a little bit for you. 
So even though photos can be a little bit difficult to do, if you really wanna sell a lot of product, the best way to do it is to have professional images. And the last mistake that I see on websites is generic text on the home pages. If we look here on the home page of this template, you're gonna see that the main title is Goodbye Sweats, Hello Denim. I believe this is a really good title because not only is the title less generic, but it's also showing that your brand has a little character. I can't tell you how many times that I've seen e-commerce websites say like best denim in the world or best high quality denim products or something very generic that your users have probably seen on millions of other websites. You want something that will entice them to check out your products and potentially buy. But that's basically it for the video today, guys. If you guys did enjoy or found it useful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix content coming out really soon. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you all in the next one.